Amen. It is good to be in the house of God tonight. And uh, I'm usually not the devotionalist, but either way. Psalms 121. The Lord is thy keeper. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Because God is God. And what his promises are, they hold fast. Amen. Always stand sure that God stands by his promises in everything. And he says... He will be our shelter, then he is our shelter. Amen? Amen. Amen. Singers. Amen. Oh 
Just the same old thing. Today. 
Just 
Kentucky, from West Virginia. Seemed like everybody got hit by the flood. Just one month, three states got hit by the flood. But God's a healer. God's a blesser. And He'll take care of you only. Well, I am blessed. I am blessed every day that I am blessed. Well, when I wake up in the morning, till I wake my head and pray, I am blessed. I am blessed. Well, through the sunshine and the rain, even so. My comfort and my God. Oh, let His love fill me. Let His grace fill me. And someday I'm gonna be by His side. Oh, I'm blessed. Oh, I am blessed. Oh, I am blessed. Every day when I'm here, I'm blessed. Shoes up on my feet. I got plenty of and a home in heaven by my Well, brothers and sisters, I deserve. They are mine, my word. And someday we're going to shout on the other side. Well, I am blue. Thank you. 
give me silver. Some say give me gold. I say give me Jesus. He's the greatest in my soul. King Jesus. Jesus. I know you hear me when I pray. For I die here in trouble. Yeah. 
tonight. But if you have your Bibles, try, try to do what we can to say a little something that will try to help somebody and uh, and be looking in the book of John tonight, chapter 9, and be reading uh, one verse of scripture. But if you don't mind to stand for reference to the word of God tonight, John chapter 9, beginning with verse number 25, be reading this one verse. Be all we have in our heart and on our minds tonight. I do ask you to pray for my voice. Yeah. My voice, I'm surprised I'm able to speak at all, but we're going to do what we can to say a little something. But John chapter 9, beginning with verse number 25. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that whereas I was blind, but now I see. Let's read that one more time together. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that whereas I was blind, now I see. At this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, God, as we come before you, Lord, to the Lord, praise the Lord, as we bow our willing heads, our willing hearts, and our praise this afternoon. God, we thank you, Father God, for another day of life. God, we thank you, Father, for all the big blessings of God that you have given us. And Lord, we thank you today, God, for this opportunity, Lord, that we have to be in your house one more time. Lord, to be behind your sacred desk, Lord. Lord, to be able, God, to preach the truth of the Word of God. And Lord, I can do nothing without your anointing, Lord, and without your spirit. For God, we know, God, it's your anointing, God, that breaks the yoke. It's your anointing that breaks the chains. God, your anointing that breaks the shackles. Lord, we ask you today, God, you anoint me one more time. Lord, with your Holy Ghost and with power, Lord, you give me nothing more, nothing less, and what you have me to say. And Lord, I pray as they would say, Lord, that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart, Lord, be acceptable in our sight. And Lord, I ask you today, most of all, Lord, somebody won't be out of here, Lord, the same way they came in, but Lord, that you guys, you were says, after you met me in Christ, he is a new creature, all things have passed away, and beyond all things have become new. And we'll never pray to you, Lord. Give me the praise, give me the glory. It's in Jesus' my name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen, amen. You may be seated tonight. Somebody shout, Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. I really want you to take notice 
on this scripture tonight, and I uh, just wanted to re go back, and I really want you to re uh, really take notice of verse 25 here. And the Bible says, He actually says, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. But one thing I know that whereas I was blind, but now I but but now I was blind, but now I see. And I doubt about this scripture. And if you go back into chapter nine, the Bible speaks about Jesus passed out seeing this blind man, and knowing that he was blind from birth, his disciples was with him, and he asked the Lord, they said, Master, they said, was it his parents' sin, or was it his sin that this man was born blind? The Bible said that he told him, he said it was neither, but he was blind, that the glory of God may be manifested in him. And the Bible says that they started questioning, the Bible says that Jesus had come to this blind man that had been blind from birth, and you realize that he was not able to see all of his life until this point that he met Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that he rubbed mud on his eyes and then the Bible says that he the Bible says that Jesus taught him to go wash in the pool, I believe it was called the pool of Siloam where the Bible says that Jesus told him to go and wash his eyes. I tell you the Bible says that when he went to wash his eyes, all he knew one thing is that he was able to see Brother Joey, they started questioning the man. They said, how did you receive in your sight back from this man? We I mean, want to know. You, we know that you are blind. They even called his parents, Sister Maxine, and they asked him. They said, do you? They said, how did your boy receive his sight? Oh, they said, know I do know that he was born blind. I do know that he wasn't able to see. They called in the man again. They said we want to know how did you get your sight back from this man. They said do you not know that this man is a sinner. What amazes me the most. What did this blind man do on one day? He said I don't know much about this man. I don't know whether he be a sinner or not, but one thing I do know I once was blind, but now I see. Amen. You know what? Amen. When I came to him, I didn't know much about him, Brother Joey. I didn't know much more about him. Honey, but one thing I know a whole lot more about him than what I did before. But when I met this man called Jesus, I might have not knew a lot about him. But when I met him, one thing that I could tell you is I once was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I'm so glad today, honey, I'm so glad today that Jesus still a man called Jesus who can open up the blinded eyes. You know what? You may say, Brother why was you lost? I believe one reason why I was lost is so that the glory of God can be manifested in me. Honey, just to show, you know what? I'm a cry. You know what? You take me and I'm just a product of what God can really do. I'm just somebody, honey, just a somebody that was lost and undone without God. That he poured a day himself. I'm in the glory of God. I am so glad today, honey, to know the God that I serve can still take sin Sinner boys and sinner girls and wash them in red blood and honey and save them. Yeah, I thought about this more and more about this blind man. He said, I don't know much about him. He said, you're asking me questions I can't even answer you. But one thing that I do know, I don't know a whole lot, but I can know. I know what it was like to be blind. I know what it was like to be lost. I know what it was like to, honey, to be on my way to hell. But one thing I can say is I know what it's like to see. I know what it's like to be found. And I know what it's like, honey, to have my feet placed upon a solid rock. I know what it's like to be born again. I know what it's like to be saved. I know what it's like to hang my sins on the blood of Jesus.
Jesus Christ. I'm glad to know. I may not know much about him, but I can tell you one thing. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to come to the foot of the cross. I know what it's like to have my sins under the blood. I may not know a whole lot of things, but I do. I can promise you this. I do know what it's like. I need to know. I need to have to know how it feels to come to a cross. I'm so glad to know to know how it feels to be a child of the living God. Honey, it's so many Pharisees today. Honey, they question us. They criticize us. They mock us. But you know what? I'm glad to know. Honey, they don't understand. Honey, what I have, they can't uncover in what I have. Honey, they wonder why I shout like I do. Why I praise him like I do. Why I magnify him like I do. It's because I once was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They started, they quit, they kept questioning him. You know. But you know what? They said, I've already told you. And still, you don't believe me. You know what? We could tell this whole world about Jesus. But you know what? The more we tell them about Jesus, the more, you know what? It seems like, Brother Joy, is that they harden their hearts. They, honey, they turn a deaf ear and they turn a blind eye. It seems the more that you preach on hell, they turn the other eye and turn the other cheek. The more you preach on the truth of the Word of God, they turn the other cheek and turn the other way because they don't want to hear it anymore. Right. You know why the house of God is not full like it once was? It's because we're living in a world today that you know what? Sadly but truly is they've gotten so used to being blind. Amen. Come on, church. Yes. Maybe it's a good thing we didn't sing, sing a few songs and head on home. I feel the Holy Ghost. You know what? We got so used. I mean, the sad thing about this world is they got so used to being blind that they don't even want to even see. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. But you know what? I couldn't even imagine. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I've never been blind. I've never been blind as far as physical sight. You know what? If even if I went blind, I wouldn't know even know how to react, sister Lisa. I really would. I wouldn't know how to react because I not because I've always been able to see. But you know what? I'm gonna tell you something. Blind Bartimaeus, he didn't know how to react because he knew that he was born blind and he couldn't see. From the day one until, until Jesus met him, Brother Joey, he couldn't see it all. But you know what? I know one thing. I believe that when he was able to see, I, he, he just didn't know. I believe he didn't know how to react. But he knew he had to tell somebody. He knew that he had to witness to somebody to let somebody know I once was blind. But now I can see. No doubt. He shouted across the nation. He shouted across the country huh? to let somebody know huh? honey I'm here huh? to let somebody know huh? honey huh? if you don't know huh? what it's like to be able to see huh? you ought to try it huh? sometime I'm going to tell you something I never was blind physically but I was blind spiritually you know what to the world, the devil has got their eyes so blinded that they don't even know which way they're going. But you know one thing's for certain. Any more that you preach on the truth of the word of God. Honey, boy, the sad thing about it is, Sister Maxine, is they don't want to hear it. 
And you know what? There's coming a day. And you know what? You think this world is worse? The Bible says that this world is going to wax worse and worse and worse and worse. The yes. Bible says that so in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Can I tell you today, they're going to come to a day that's going to come to a time that this world's going to wonder, where's the church? The world's going to wonder, where are the saints of God? They're going to wonder, where are them that preached all these years? Where are the ones that gathered into the house of God all these years? Where's the ones that's been pastoring for all these years and stood for the truth of the word of God? And one of these days, we're going to be gone. Church, one of these days, I believe when the sound of doubt and the trumpet of God is going to sound. And the Bible says that the dead in Christ are going to rise. And the day of which our doubt will remain. Shall we come together to meet the Lord in the air? And so shall we ever be with the Lord. No, oh, that's a train. You know what? I, I, I'm going I'm to hear the sound of a trumpet. Oh, That's one of these days. I'm going to hear the sound of a trumpet. And it's going to be louder than a train's horn. It's going to be louder than a round horn. I'm going to take a glory cloud. And you know what? Honey, this world may mock us now. This world may criticize us now. This world may talk about us now. But honey, one of these days, honey, they're going to be wondering, oh, we believe the church now. We believe the pastor now. We believe that preacher now. And it will be too late. I tell you all, ready or not, the Lord is coming. And you know what this world tells us? Exactly what that song says. This world says that He's not coming. You know what? They live like the Lord's not coming back. They live like there's not going to be no end. They dope it up. They drug it up. They party it up. They do their own little thing. But we as a church, we as a nation, we as a whole, honey, for those that truly believe on the word of God, we know that he's coming back. That he's coming back after a bride that has made herself ready. Says, so, so an hour that you think not, so shall it come in of the Son of Man be. Right. And you know what? We may not know the day, or we might not know the hour. It's been over 2,000 years ago since he went away. Yes. And from 2,000 years ago until now. You know what we preached all these years? You know what we stood for all these years? We've always preached to this world. We've always preached to the church. We've always preached to the congregation. We've always preached to the drug addicts. We've always preached to the dope addicts. We've always preached to all those that are lost. To be ready. The coming of the Lord is drawing nigh. How many times have you heard that church? How many times have you heard it preach from pastors of old and preachers of old that have gone on before? But be ready. The coming of the Lord is drawing nigh. You may say, you know what? They're asking the same questions as they did in the Word of God. Where is, where is the promise of His coming? They're asking that question, Sister Maxine. And you know what? Even today, they're looking at us and looking at, looking at the pastors looking at the deacons, looking at the church members, and they're saying, where? Where? You preaching it. You talking about it. You're standing for it. You're standing on the word of God. You're standing 
on that promise. But where is the promise of his coming? And you say, Brother Ethan, he's not come yet. Yes, he is. Where is the promise of his coming? You've been preaching it for all these years, but where is the promise of his coming? You say, You've been coming to church for all these years. Where is the promise of his coming? You know what? I'm going to tell you something. I may not know the day or I may not know the hour, but I can sort of see the signs of the times and we yeah. are living here. The Lord is soon to return. Yes. That's right. And the Bible says that soul in that time, honey, I'm going to tell you something. As that song said, they're going to be high, trying to hide. And they're going to call to the rocks to follow on them. But you know what? They're not going to hide from the judgment of Almighty God. Right. Right. Bible says that every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ. Glory. Not Buddha. Hallelujah. Not Muhammad. Not Baal. But honey, all these knees. Can I tell you today that all these knees that have bowed to these idol gods, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I said all these knees back in the Old Testament that bowed their knees to all these idol gods, honey, there's going to come a time that they're all going to bow, and they're not going to bow to them. They're not going to bow to them. They're not going to bow to a golden cat. They're not going to bow to a You 
you won't believe at the people that don't even believe in Jesus Christ. And especially they don't believe in him being crucified. But you know what? I'll tell you something. But I guarantee you one thing. If they make it into heaven, the way there still goes by the cross of Calvary. Everybody that you see that has entered into heaven, but I'll guarantee you one thing. There's no escaping it. It's either by the cross or you're going by hellfire. It's either by the blood or you're on your way straight to hell. It's either by the nail scarred hands. I'm going to tell you something. There's no escaping it. Those that enter into heaven, be sure of one thing, somewhere along the way in their life, they had to go by a cross. They had to go by the blood. They had to go by his male scarred hands. And I may not know a lot about this man, but one thing that I could tell you, I know a little more about him than what I used to know. And I still, even to this day, they can't tell you a whole lot about him. But one thing that I could say is I once was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I'm found. He looked at them scribes and he looked at them Pharisees. And he said, they said, they, they told the man, how did you receive your sight from this sin. He looked at them so boldly. And he said, I don't know. And I can't tell you whether he's a sinner or not. But even if he is a sinner, one thing I can tell you is I once was blind. But now I see. About you, church. But I'm glad to know that I once was blind, but now I see. You know what? He did. You know what? There come a time in my life that he rubbed spiritual mud over my spiritual eyes. And you know what? If this world could only see. But here's the thing the world don't, Brother Joey. The world don't. But if the world could only see what I could see. If this world could only feel what we feel here tonight. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. This world just don't know what they're missing out on. Because you know what? I have enjoyed every night of this revival. And one thing, and I'm not picking at nobody, and I'm being serious, as a heart attack. Sister Lisa made the statement before service, and I know she's probably there just picking. But she made a statement that if it was her herself, she'd probably just up and leave. But if I had to have, if I came here and I was by myself, to feel what I feel here tonight. You know what I would have done? If it was only me tonight. I would have brought that church key and I would have preached to myself. Harley. Harley's praying anyway. But you know what? I'm going to tell you something. I'm glad to know that the Spirit of God is still real. I'm glad to know that I got something that I can feel. 
And you know what? If all in this world could only see. All of this world could only feel what we feel. They just don't know what they're missing. And you know what? The things that they're in and the things that they're doing today in the world, I'm going to tell you something. You ain't missing much. But you know what? What this world is missing, you may not be missing, you may not be missing much, but what this world is missing is having salvation. What this world is missing is having joy in their life. What this world is missing is having peace in their life. What this world is missing, and that's having hope in their life. And you know what? The joy that I have, this world didn't give it. And this world can't take it away. This peace that I have, the world didn't give it. And this world can't take it away. The peace that I have, the world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. This love that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. This Jesus Christ that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. The cross that I have, the world didn't do it, and the world can't take it away. The blood that was shed, the world didn't shed it. And the world can't take it away. The only thing, you may say, Marie, what can the world do? I about guarantee you one thing. The world can do anything to us, and that is to try to shut us up from sharing this gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that the world can do unto us. But you know what? When they shut us up, the Word of God's got a voice for itself. And when the church, when they shut the church up, they can't shut the Word of God up. They can't shut up the voice of the Word of God, and they can't shut up the voice of the blood. They can't shut up the voice of the cross, and they can't shut up the voice of an empty tomb. I'm going to tell you something. I'm glad. You know what? I love this right here. Knowing that God don't need me right. to speak for him. God can speak for himself. Amen. I don't need to speak for the blood. The blood can speak for itself. I don't need to speak for the cross. The cross can speak for itself. Amen. I don't need to speak for an empty tomb. The empty tomb can speak for itself. But I do want to let somebody know out there in the world that I once was blind. Yes. If I let this world know nothing else, when it comes my time to leave this world, and I'm going to ask Sister Emily to come on. Yeah, I didn't much shout tonight, and it ain't all in a shout. I'm about to shout it out. <laughs> But if I, with my dying breath, and it came my time to leave this world, and I was lying on my deathbed, but a joy. I love to have a mic in my hand. And I love to have it turn up so loud that this world can hear me to let them know I once was blind, but now I see. I can't tell you much about it. I didn't know.
when I met the Lord, I didn't know much about him, Brother Joey. I didn't know what I know now about him. I just talked to him and he just he just became my best friend. About like me and any other person. About like meeting anybody in the church house or anybody in, just just getting to know somebody, Sister Mike C. Now I guess where I could pick on somebody a little bit before I really get serious. Same as me and Miss Sister Mike C. There was a time that I didn't know you all, Sister Lisa. Y'all, and look where we are today. You know what? It's the same thing with me and Jesus. That's right. That's right. There was a time that I just met, you know, and look where me and him are today. I don't know about you, but I feel that. I don't know about you, but how many can say that you're glad you met this man called Jesus? Yeah.